So in this lesson, we are going to do a deep dive of Grafana Canvas Panel. Grafana Canvas Panel is great when you want to show some kind of diagram and along with the diagram, you also want to show the live data. So let's go ahead and see that in action. We are going to go ahead, click on new dashboard. Let's click on add visualization and let's go ahead, select Prometheus data source. Now here you can see by default, we have time series. So we are going to change it and going to search for canvas or you can just scroll down and you can see canvas here. If you're not able to find it, just search for canvas and you can see canvas is here. So let's go ahead and click on this. Now, as soon as you click on canvas, you can see that these canvas related properties are going to pop up. So let's go ahead, first of all, collapse everything. So we can see what are the various options available here. So here you can see as soon as we select canvas, we can see one option coming up for canvas. And then we also have one option coming up for layer. So these are the two options which we will be needing when we are playing around with canvas panel. So first of all, you can see under the layer section, we have various elements. So by default, you can see here we have one element already added. We are just going to go ahead and remove this. As soon as I remove this, you can see it is removed from the panel. Now let's go ahead and see what are the various elements which are available here. So here you can see under elements, let's go ahead, click on add item. And once we do that, you can see there are various options which are available. First one is metric value. We can use it when we want to show some value. For example, let's say we want to see memory utilization, CPU utilization, or total number of users who are logged into the server. So whenever you want to show some kind of value or some kind of metrics value, you are going to use this. And text is quite simple. Let's say you want to hard code some information. In that case, you are going to use text. We can also let's go ahead and add one all of these one by one so we are able to visualize them so this one is for matrix now let's go ahead and add for text as well you can see this is the text so we can just double click on this and add some text for example let's call it some demo text and let's click on add item and now let's click on ellipse now once you do that you can see one ellipse is popping up here let's go ahead click on rectangle once you do that you can see we have this rectangle available here now all of these elements are quite useful when you want to draw some kind of flow chart which is going to give you a visual representation of something so i'm going to show you how to do that but let's just go ahead and quickly see all the available items you can see we have icons as well let's click on icon now once we click on icon we have by default this question mark icon but you can just select this element for example this icon element and scroll down and then you can see we have this uh, extra properties where we can decide what is the icon we want to select so for example here you can see we have several options available let's say i want to represent user in that case i can go ahead and select this user icon click on select and you can see this icon has changed to user so again it is quite useful when you want to play around with some diagram now let's go ahead and see another item so let's go ahead and select server. So server again is quite useful when you want to display some kind of server related problem. Let's go ahead and move it around. So we have little bit more space. Okay, so here now we can see servers. Now again for server also we have various properties available. For example, let's say if I scroll down here, you can see under the element, I have option of choosing server, whether it is going to be single. If we select single, this is how it is going to show like. If we change it to stack, you can see we have set of servers being shown. It is quite useful when you want to visualize some sort of let's say cluster kind of servers again we can go ahead and choose database in that case it is going to changing to database it is quite useful when you want to visualize or let's say represent some database server and then we also have terminal which is again quite useful when you want to show some kind of users or end users okay now let's go ahead and select add item again you can see now we have cloud we have parallelogram we have button, we have wind turbine, we have drone top, we have drone front and side angle as well. So most of the time we also can use button. Now button is quite useful when you want to perform some action. I'm going to show you all of these quite soon. So now let's go ahead and remove all of these items. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of these and we are going to make use of some practical example. So now let's go ahead and add an item. I'm going to go ahead and choose an icon and I'm going to rename it rather than calling it element one. I'm just going to call it end users. And also I'm going to scroll down and change the icon from question. I'm going to change it to user. And let's select this user circle. Okay, so let's assume this is our end users who are going to access our application. And then also let's go ahead and add a server. And this one we are going to call 
end user system and I'm going to change it to terminal. Now you can move around all of these elements. So for example, this is selected. If I want to move it around, I can move around and align them in whatever way I like. Now here, when you want to make modifications, you need to select that item. For example, here, let's select this end user system. And once you click on that, you can see this one is being selected and then scroll down. And here we are going to change it from single. We are going to change it to terminal. Now, once you do that, you can see this changing to terminal. We can also connect these items. For example, if you hover mouse here, you can see these smaller X appearing. You can just select any of them and you can link it to this other element. So in this case, now these are linked. If I just move it around, you can see this link is going to continue. Now we have users who are going to, let's say, access some, our application, which is a web application on a terminal. And then this is going to, let's say, hit one of the application which we have available. So let's say we have two applications. So I'm just going to go ahead and add item. Again, I'm going to add server and I'm going to call it app one or app server one and then I'm just going to add another one which is going to be server as well and this one is going to be called app server two and let's go ahead align them properly so I'm just going to keep it here which I'm just going to keep it here okay so somehow I ended up removing that icon I'm just going to go ahead and add that again Okay, and now let's say these application are also connected to a DB server. So we are going to go ahead, add another element. And this is also going to be of type server. And we are going to make it DB server. And let's keep it here. Now here we can go ahead and change its type to DB server. And now let's assume this is how these items are connected. So first users are going to access our application through a terminal and from this terminal let's say our client application is running here so this one is let's say either going to connect to app 1 or it can connect to app 2 by the way this canvas panel is quite new this has been just added in a previous version so it is still not quite intuitive so for example i'm not really quite able to change it you know able to connect it for example right now this one is not connected so i'm just going to go ahead and remove this and I'm going to reconnect it. Okay, so now these are connected and if I move it around, our arrows are going to move as well. Now let's say whenever application request comes, this is also going to connect to DB and we have single database available. So both of these applications have access to this database. So I'm just going to connect both of them to this database. Okay, so this is how it's going to look like. Now let's go ahead, click on apply and this is the visualization which we can see right now you can see this is currently not really quite intuitive so if you want to make changes in the visualization you can directly do that here so i'm just going to remove these arrows by selecting them and pressing delete button and then i'm just going to connect them again okay so now these are connected if i move it around arrows are also moving let's also go ahead and save this dashboard so i'm just going to call it canvas demo and let's click on save so now we can see we have diagram available but we have not really added any data to it yet so let's go ahead and edit this and now we are going to work on this query so here you can see we have selected prometheus data source now let's say in the matrix we want to select or we want to see whether the item is up so i'm just going to use this up which provides a value of one or zero if a server is up or down. Now let's go ahead, click on run queries. Okay, once you do that, you may not be able to see the data here. So what I'm gonna do is let's click on apply for now. I just want to show you what is the data gonna look like first. So it's gonna be easier for you to understand this. So let's go ahead and click on add. Let's click on visualization, either to time series or probably we can go ahead and select stat. Now here we are going to go ahead and select up and going to select this one. And now click on run queries and also here in the time filter we are just going to select let's say last 15 minutes and here in the label we are going to change it to custom and we are going to type instance okay so this is the data we have right now we have application server one which is up so that's why we are seeing one as a value and again we have app server two we have db server so this is going to be our app server 2 this is our app server 1 and this is our db server now we want to show this in red color now we want to add those data here okay so i'm just going to show you how it's gonna be working so let's go ahead and edit this now 
and we have added up here so now we will be able to use the value of these here so first of all let's go ahead and click on db server once you do that just scroll down now here in the status color you can see we have choose now once you click on that you can see all of these items being shown here now rather than seeing only the server name you are able to see this complete json string so we don't want to see everything for that what we can do is let's go ahead click on options here and let's select custom and here also we can change it to instance only so once we do that and and then we click on status color you can see now we have all the servers available so what we are uh, saying is that we want to change the status color of this database and we want to keep it based on the value of up metric okay so i have selected db server and once we do that you can see now this is showing in green color and where this value is coming from this is basically coming from this threshold so here we have base value set for green and then we have 80 set for red it means any value between 0 to 79 going to be shown in green color and then 80 onwards is going to be shown in red color. Now that is not what we want in current scenario. We know the value of up is going to be either 1 or 0. It is going to be 1 when server is up otherwise it is going to be 0. So it means we need to change it. So we are going to make base color red which is going to represent a value of 0 and then we are going to change it from 80 we are going to change it to 1 and also we are going to change the color of it from red to green so now this is fine and now we can go ahead and do the same thing for our app server 2 so for app server 2 let's scroll down and we are going to change the status color we are going to select app server 2 color and then here also we are going to change its color we are going to change it to app server 1 color now let's say rather than only showing this in green color you also want to show whether it is up or down so you can do that as well in that case we can go ahead and click on add item and then we can choose let's say maybe matrix value let's click on matrix value and here let's say we want to add whatever value or status of server one is so let's go ahead and change it to app server one status and just scroll down Now here you can see we have metric value we have this field so here in the field we are going to select app server one now once you do that we are going to see value of one because obviously currently the server status is up now let's say rather than seeing one you want to show it as value of up or down so in that case you need to just scroll down and change the value mapping so what we are going to do here is we are going to say if value is one we want to show up and we are going to add one more value mapping if value is zero we want to show it as down now let's go ahead click on update so here you can see now it is going to show as up or down now you can place it of course on top of this server in that case it is just going to show the data here now you can also play around with the color background color of this item so again let's select this item select this item then scroll down and here you can see we have selected element app server one status now here also you can play around with the color of this for example let's say you don't want a fixed color you want maybe the color based on the threshold value in that case you can select for example in this case i can select app server one and in that case this is going to be shown in green color when this server is down it is going to be shown in red color now you can follow the same approach for other items as well if you want to so i'm just going to quickly add for other items as well i'm just going to copy it paste it here i'm just going to go ahead and duplicate it and keep it here this one i'm going to leave it here i'm just going to duplicate it one more time and then we are going to keep one item here and we just need to quickly see this one is going to show value of app server one this is fine we need to change it to app server two so let's do that and this one we need to change to db server so let's do that okay and we can do the same for these as well for example you can see we have this arrow we don't want to keep a fixed color for example we want to show it green when this db server is up and we want to show it these arrows in red color when this db server is down so we can do that as well uh, let's go ahead and select this one and then we are going to change this color so i'm just going to keep it based on the db server's value so let's select second as well and change it to db server you can see now these are showing in green color now let's do the same for both of these arrows so we are going to select first arrow and this is based on the value of app server 2 and this one is based on the value of app server 1 again if you are forgetting which one is app server 1 or which one is app server 2 what you can do is you can add another element for example let's go ahead add another element of text type and this one we can call it app server one and we can drag it and keep it here again you can go ahead duplicate it 
you can keep it here and call it app server 2 okay so this is how it's gonna look like now you can see along with the server we also have this tiny bulb so this can also be changed for example let's say we are selecting this server and if you scroll down you can see we have something called bulb color so by default it is nothing we can go ahead and keep it to app server 2's value and here also we are going to go ahead change it and keep it to app server 1 value so this bulb color is also going to be changing from green to red now you can do the same for db but if you don't want you can leave it as it is okay so let's leave it as it is so we can just uh, see some visualization now let's go ahead and click click on apply let's go ahead and save it again and i'm just going to move it a bit so let's go ahead and keep it on top okay now this is looking fine now you can see if i hover my mouse here it is still giving me option of editing for example i'm able to scroll it or i'm able to move it around if you don't want to allow that in that case you can just go ahead click on edit and then here you need to just disable inline editing so let's do that and click on apply again now we won't be able to edit it here in the display mode now what i'm gonna do is i'm just going to bring down this db server okay so we have brought db server down and we are going to now see this one changing to red color and these arrows also should be changing to red color so let's see that here you can see our refresh interval is currently nothing so we need to manually refresh it or we can change it to five seconds so in that case this is going to change every five seconds but as soon as we have latest data available which you can see now you can see its value has changed to red and both of these arrows have also changed to red color now let's go ahead and bring up a db server and we are going to bring down app server 2 and let's see how it's going to look like And then we are just going to wait here we are going to see how it's gonna look like so here you can see this is how it's showing right now we can see app server 2 is showing as down and this arrow which was green has now changed to red color so similarly you can play around with these items as well if you want to change the color of these you will be able to do that using the similar approach so that's all i had for this lesson if you have any query or question or you need more detail about canvas panel please leave a comment and then i'm going to make more tutorials based on that so i'll see you again in the next lesson